Uh, Alex Cora, I was going to ask you how you're doing, but uh, it's pretty gloomy outside. We'll start. It is right. We going to get baseball today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Good to go. Good to go. Seen the Doppler, the whole thing. We're fine. Okay. We got to play this series. It's a big one for the family. This is a big one. We got Joey on this side, so we got bragging rights. Okay. Well, that's go. That's a good go. Let's go. Well, you're not at full strength for the series. Another injury, Tyler O'Neill to the IL. You had a comment last night. We just played it. You need to stay in the hunt. Is how you put it. Is that about getting injured players like Cassis and Yoshida O'Neal back? Is that about adding at the deadline? What, why do you feel that way? No, I think uh, getting Yoshida back, Cassis back, obviously T.O. Um, you know, offensively, he's been a grind throughout the season. We know that. Uh, there's a lot of positives in the last few days. You know, uh, Vaughn hitting the ball harder. Rafael, I'm making an adjustment with his hands. Uh, you know, Abreu, he, he's been amazing. Jaron, too. Hamilton. I mean, the way he's playing, uh, we, we have a very dynamic team, but uh, you know, sometimes that big swing we, is needed, right? Uh, perfect example yesterday with us, uh, against us. Um, hit by pitch, single, single, walk, the big swing, grand slam, it's 5 nothing, And uh, we're missing that. But uh, we'll keep grinding. We keep, we'll keep putting good at-bats. I think the running game is going to be huge for us in the upcoming weeks, putting, putting pressure on the opposition. And if we do that, we're going to be okay. Looking at the trade deadline and your uh, the pitching side of your game, there was this report at the very beginning of the week about Kenley Jansen uh, maybe moving at the trade deadline. What is it like when that's still weeks off uh, managing your clubhouse and having that information out there, even with somebody like Kenley who's been in the majors for a long time? Yeah, um, I work in the business for four years, five years, and, and sometimes in that green room, you know, uh, reporters and XGMs, all that gotcha. start playing uh fantasy fantasy baseball right so uh i think it's it's too early to be talking about the training deadline to be honest with you uh there's a lot of teams kind of like in the middle let's put it that way there's there's the elite ones right now the yankees baltimore the dodgers phillies and then the rest of us are like in the middle right uh playing 500 baseball three games over there's a lot of baseball to be played and uh you know, just watching how the trading deadline developed the last few years with the extra wild card. You know, uh, GMs work in different ways, right? Uh, they got to be, you know, very cautious about how they go about their business. So I, I do believe it's still early for that. So because uh, it's interesting with the added wild card, and, and maybe this old adage has kind of changed, but it used to be, yeah, you, know, you got two months to kind of figure out what your team is, two months to adjust and upgrade your team and then two months after the deadline where you just are what you are and now you're making a playoff push is that is that an outdated way of thinking it because we're really almost to those middle you know month three and four of a baseball season where you would be tinkering with your roster yeah i think uh <clears throat> if you look at the braves a few years ago uh when when they got hurt Acuna goes down and they were playing kind of like 500 right and they got three new outfielders to their mix and they took off. They start playing good baseball. Arizona last year, the Rangers. So uh, there's always a chance to get hot, you know. But uh, as a team, you gotta you gotta show the front office that you're playing good baseball. And and there's a few trends that they look at it. Uh, I do believe this year the difference is, and I know we struggle against Baltimore pitching wise, but we should pitch. We we should be able to pitch, and on a nightly basis, you feel like hey, there's a chance they're going six. We got a chance to win this ball game, right? You got Pivetta tonight against the Tigers. He should go six, and we should score runs, and we got a chance to win this game. And I think that's the difference between us this year compared to the last two years. Alex, on the subject of the front office, uh, Sam Kennedy was on with Greg Hill this morning and was Sam asked was? about. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, was asked about what we got. Whether you think the team, uh, has over or uh, overachieved. And he had a long answer. I won't read the whole thing, but it was a long answer just to tell you. He said, I don't think we've overperformed. I think, if anything, we've underperformed given the talent and competitiveness in that clubhouse. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? I think we played okay. You know, uh, we, I mean, when you're playing 500, you're playing okay. Uh, we pitch well offensively. We have struggle defensively. We struggled early in the season. We're better now. Um, I mean, like, who was it? Bill Parcells? You know, you are who. who That's Bill. Who you, yep. Right. <laughs> yep. You are who you are. Right. What, what your record is, and uh, we're a 500 team. Um, injuries are part of it. We're not the only team that has been hit with injuries, so uh, we just got to play better against uh, uh, the better opposition. Right. Uh, right now, we got the Tigers who are playing around 500. 
come here, win the series, it's three out of four. That's a big swing. And then we got Atlanta for two. We got the White Sox after that for four. So, you know, let's let's concentrate this week and um, and see where it takes us. So, as you mentioned, uh, your defense has been a lot better recently, and it's certainly better than where you guys were at at this point last season. Uh, what do you think the biggest difference maker is it? Is it just having Rafael out there? Is it a roster thing? Is it a different approach that you guys are all bringing from the staff? I think it's playing the players that we have in the right positions. That, that Last year, uh, we had Duvi in center field, who's actually a corner outfielder. We had Kika playing shortstop, who hasn't played, he didn't play shortstop for a while, and we struggle. We struggle. This year, now you find it, you know, Hamilton kind of like found his, his way of playing, you know, slow down the game. Now we can play him ashore. Now we can play Rafael in center. And it's a very dynamic uh, group out there. Vaughn has played great at second base. Dom at first base has been solid. So uh, just playing the players in the right positions, I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Flipping through something here. Uh, your brother's in town, obviously. Um, you guys have a, a very close relationship. He's a lot older than you, yes. uh, right? He's uh, 10 11. years older 11. than you. Yep. Um, what was that sort of like uh, as he was going on about his baseball journey while you were a teenager and uh, sort of that, that part of your life? Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, my dad passed away when I was 13, so Joey became our guy in the family. Um, we didn't play much when, when when I was in middle school or high school because he was at Vanderbilt and then he was doing his thing professionally. But for me, it was very easy to follow the footsteps of my hero. That was easy, you know, and uh, he will come down to play winter ball in Puerto Rico and uh, he will pick me up at 315 at the house to go to the games. And I was able to see Robbie Alomar, Sandy Alomar, Matt Williams, uh, Ryan Klesko, Greg Vaughn, David Kahn, Cohn. I, I mean, just to be around those guys when I was a kid, it uh, it was a, a blessing, right? And uh, it helped me to become the player I, I was and, and the manager that I am, just being around those guys. Uh, it was fun to be around him. It's always fun to, to coach against him. Uh, the only difference nowadays is like in the past, he will pick up the tap whenever we went out, you know, to have drinks or, <laughs> or dinner. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> How uh, it, do you guys get, uh, you know, competitive at all still these days? Like, is that something that uh, is in the past? That's a younger thing? You're shaking your head. No, 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 not anymore. I mean, obviously, we're working for our organizations and we want to beat each other. You know, we want to win. But I know, I know in deep, deep in his heart, you know, like he doesn't mind when – when the little brother wins, you know, he loves it. He loves it. Well, you could beat him in a road race these days, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been a, since he had knee replacements, like knee replacement, like five or six years ago, even when I was fat, you know, I probably, <laughs> I said, it was easy. Take wins however you can get them, is what I was. <laughs> he won't, he won't. I'm running tomorrow. I'm, I got eight tomorrow. He, he, he's not going to join me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's time now for our Sherwin Williams question of the week. It's sponsored by Sherwin Williams. Uh, ask Sherwin Williams how to bring color to your life. And our Sherwin Williams question of the week is from Jared April from Sherwin-Williams in Wareham, Massachusetts. This is similar to a, a question we've gotten before. But how do you deal with different personalities in the clubhouse? And you know, I'm thinking about that question, as we've asked it to you before, with some of the guys who go into the Red Sox Hall of Fame yesterday. <laughs> Papelbon, Pedroia, Trot Nixon. Like, how do, you, how do you kind of deal with big personalities like that in particular? Yeah, I, I can tell you the Pedroia, Papelbon, you know, in, in 07. Uh, both of them, they were huge for us. Um, you know, to, to help us win the World Series. Two different, different personalities uh, with, with Pap, um, you know, our mental skills coach, uh, Donnie Coxin, who works for Dallas. He's doing an outstanding job with the Mavericks, by the way. Oh, a little yeah, Mavs connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. So, uh, you know, he gave him structure, you know, like checkpoints throughout the day. Uh, you see Pap, the way he acts and all that, you know, he needed to concentrate on certain things. So in the eighth or ninth inning, he was ready to go. With Pedroia was basically just shut up and play, bro. You know, like, uh, I still remember there was a game uh, early in May, and he went 0 for 4 trying to hit the ball to, you know, to the bottle. To, I mean, to the Coca-Cola sign that we have right now and pulling off and the same swing, same, you know, it was over and over and over again. And uh, he's talking to the media, and he was – his, his locker was in between – Mine and Mikey Lowe, and and me and Mikey were sitting there just listening, and he goes like, "Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. I'm gonna rake. The laser show is coming." <laughs> I look at Mikey like, "Man, this freaking guy just like zip it, bro." 
And uh, just to help him to go through the process early on, uh, it, was, it was good. Uh, the one thing about Petey, and nobody talks about this, when he was hitting 150, he was the best defensive second baseman in the big leagues. He went out there to make every play. He didn't take it, uh, an, an inning off, and uh, you know he, he played the game the right way. I just saw him in the club. I said, hey, you want to come and talk to the media? He's like, no, 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 that, that's for you. But uh, <laughs> it should be a fun night. you know. And with Trot, the way he went about his business was amazing. What's, uh, what's the lineup look like tonight? What do we got? We got Cooper first. Uh, we got Vaughn, Hammy, Rafi, Reese is catching, Connor is dh in. Uh, in the outfield, we got Duran, Ref, and uh, Abreu. Um, Tyler O'Neill left you guys uh, the other day. Is there an update on him? Yes, uh, day to day. I mean, he's on the IL, but he should be fine. I think this is just uh, uh, just to make sure he's okay. We need this guy. We need this guy there. Say what? Did you get the imaging back? Yeah, everything. No, no structural damage. Uh, just a little bit of inflammation, so he should be back sooner rather than later. Okay. Alex Cora, manager of the Red Sox, joins us every week here on Jones and Mega with Arcan on WEI. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Uh, good luck this series, and we'll talk Thank to you, you next week.